How was I do? Morning, boys and girls. Hey. How you doing today? Boys and girls, you start school? Yeah. Do you got any new teachers? Yeah. Do you like your new teachers? Yeah. New teachers is like open a Christmas present. You never know what you're going to get. It can be a complete surprise, right? Uh, but school is starting and everything's going. It's really exciting, right? Boys and girls, today we're going to talk about guess who? Who are we going to talk about today, Annalyn? Yeah, Kellen, that's right. Woo. Who are we going to talk about today? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. We're going to talk about how Jesus loves us, how Jesus forgives us, how even Jesus saves us. Boys and girls, Jesus gives us a mission. You know what the word mission means? Liam, what does the word mission mean? Uh, you don't want to explain it? Can someone else explain it? Do any of you girls know what mission means? Mission. Mission. Audrey? Okay, to go rescue someone. Okay, that's a mission, right? It's a goal you want to meet. Something you want to work for. You know what mission means? Hmm. What do you think the mission of, let's say, a soccer team would be? What's the goal of a soccer team, Matthew? Or, or let's go with James. To win. How do you win, James? You score a goal. You kick the goal into the net. That's the soccer team's mission. Now, mission could be to save someone. How about firefighters? What's their mission? Alan? To put out the fire. Everyone's got a mission, but boys and girls, Jesus gives us a mission too. You know what he tells us to do? Jesus tells us to go and make disciples of all nations, to tell other people about Jesus. It's kind of like this. What's this? Rice. Looks like sand. It looks like rice. It's not rice. Seeds. Hmm. Not breadcrumbs. What is seeds? What are seeds for, boys and girls? They're for planting. Who's someone who might go out and throw seed on the ground? Farmer. A farmer. What kind of things do farmers grow? Vegetables. What kind of things do farmers grow? Skylar. A lot of fruit, veggies. Also, they grow other stuff. They grow food, veggies, and a lot of other stuff? Absolutely. Boys and girls, you know how they do it? They throw all these seed on the ground. Now, if they, will this seed grow right now? No, it's just in a bag. It's got no water. It's got no dirt, so it's supposed to put its roots down. There's no place for its roots to go down. Boys and girls, telling people about Jesus is like scattering this seed on the ground. When you tell someone that Jesus loves you, you're throwing seed on the ground. When you show love and kindness to someone else, you're showing the love of Jesus. You're telling other people about Jesus. And that's who makes the seed grow. Jesus, when we show love to others, he can make others believe in him. Why would we want other people to believe in Jesus? What's going to happen for people who believe in Jesus? Hmm? What's going to happen for those who believe in Jesus? What? I get Alan. Where are we going to go if you believe in Jesus? Uh, heaven. Does Jesus just want us in heaven? No. Does he just want everyone in this church in heaven? He wants everybody, as many as possible. Right, Kellen? I hit you in the head. He wants as many people in heaven. So what does he want us to do? What is our mission? Just plant seeds, Matthew, to go tell other people about Jesus by what we say and by what we do. Do you think you can tell one friend about Jesus this week? You think you can tell someone that Jesus loves you? Can we do that today? How about this, Bailey? You think you can do it? All right, good job. Boys and girls, we're going to pray. How do we pray? We bow our heads, we fold our hands, and you repeat after me. Dear Jesus... Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. 
Help us to plant the seeds. The seeds of faith. And anyone who will listen. So that more and more people are with us in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we, and we conclude. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're going to walk to Sunday school today, all right, boys and girls? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says that on the judgment day, every person will need to give an account for every word he has said. And they're all being written down. All of us have a transcript of our lives that when we stand on the last day before our God, we will need to justify, Jesus says, every even careless word that comes out of our mouths. So, let me ask you, what kind of words come out of your mouth? What kind of things do you say when you're angry? What kind of words do you mutter under your breath when you talk about people you don't like? What kind of jokes do you tell? Do you gossip behind people's back? Do you lie? Uh, what kind of words do you use behind the driving wheel? <laughs> uh, feeling convicted yet? Uh, I know I did when writing this sermon. Uh, it took me about 30 seconds to be like, whoa, I see just how guilty I am and just how much evil comes out of my mouth. And indeed, James tells us to be on guard, be aware, because our tongues can so easily be instruments of death. Because harsh words can come out of our mouths so very easily, it takes so little effort. To break the seventh commandment to steal, it takes some effort. To break the fifth commandment to cause physical pain or even murder, it takes some effort. But how easy it is for us to murder with our mouths. To mock, to belittle, to curse, to curse God, curse others, curse ourselves, curse, 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 curse. And we need to be on guard. Because what we say reveals who we are. James talks about this today. When he says that out of the mouth comes both praising God and cursing, and this thing should not be. So a struggle with the second commandment. Uh, not taking the Lord's name in vain. We throw around God's name like it's nothing. Oh my God! We say over and over and over. Like God means nothing to us. Like his name is a joke. Like it is a substitute for a curse. And then we come here to praise God and sing praises to God. And from one corner of our mouth comes cursing God. And the other corner comes praising him. Can that work? Can salt water and fresh water come from the same stream? It is hypocrisy. It is sin. And if out of our mouth comes cursing and using God's name so worthlessly, what does that reveal about ourselves? One more example, if you're not convicted yet. In less than two months, we have something coming up in our country. Anyone know what that might be? Uh, the presidential election. And if you want to know about harsh words, mocking words, just turn on the TV, watch the debates, watch the news anchors completely uh, just throw harsh words against those on the other side of the political spectrum. It is a verbal war zone. 
actually working on a sermon series for us as we get closer to that time. It'll be helpful for us. But there is one thing I do like about election season. And yes, it, believe it or not, there is something to like. It's a good test for Christians. Are we going to use our mouths like seemingly everyone else where people mock and belittle the candidate we don't agree with? Before I was a pastor, I would walk into churches ready to praise my God, use my tongue for good, and I would hear four different conversations in the narthex amongst the greeters who were saying things like, this candidate is the worst thing ever. Our president is just an awful, wicked person. He's worth nothing. What does that reveal about ourselves? I thought Christians were supposed to be different. I thought we were supposed to honor our leaders, honor even the people we don't agree with. Or are we supposed to be just like our atheist Uncle Ted? Writing those rants on Facebook. Maybe we should use our tongues not to belittle and disgrace, but rather to build up. God made Kamala Harris. God made Donald Trump. Both, James says, are made in the likeness of God. You do not have permission to curse them. You don't have to agree with them. But as Peter says, we honor them. Because when we are quick to use our tongues for evil, we do not point to the one we worship. We point to ourselves. But when we say words of love, of compassion, of patience, when the world around us curses and we refuse to, who do we point to? We point to Jesus. And that's a good thing. Because there is going to come a day when we all will stand before the judgment seat and we will need to make an account. We will need to justify every word we have said and we won't be able to. I will see that I have used my mouth for such evil. Out of my mouth have come much curses, much disgrace. I have even used this mouth to curse the God that I believe in. I will be worthy of nothing. But then in that moment, Jesus will say the only three words that matter. I forgive you. By Jesus' blood, he can even redeem this mouth of mine. By Jesus' blood, he washes away all your sins. The much evil that comes out of our tongues, our imperfections, what we deserve, we do not get because of Jesus' sacrifice for us. He bore every word we said on the cross for us. We have been redeemed so that soon and very soon we will use our tongues only for praises in the house of God in heaven forever. So, if our tongues have been redeemed, maybe we should use them not for evil, not to dishonor, not to mock, not to lie, not to curse, but rather in everything we say, show the love of Jesus, to speak patience to those who do not deserve it, to speak forgiveness to those who don't deserve it. To honor those who are against us. Because if we speak the love of Jesus and what we speak reveals who we are, what do you think that reveals about us? In his holy and precious name, amen. We continue our worship by confessing our faith in the words, the